spotting opportunities like this is one way reptiles will survive in a future world. Here, a single power plant has created turtle heaven. But worldwide, thousands of them have a very different effect. Global warming, partly caused by air pollution, could be the biggest thing to affect our planet in the future. But is that really bad news for reptiles? After all, these cold-blooded creatures depend on external heat to warm them up, and they thrive in hot environments. It's possible a rise in temperature might give reptiles a boost. But changes on such a huge scale are hard to predict. And for some reptiles, the outside temperature holds another vital card. It decides their sex. These pink flags mark painted terrapin nests on the banks of the Mississippi. Studies have revealed that when the air is warmer, more females hatch out than males. During the hottest summers, there are no males at all. Obviously, if this happened every year, the terrapins in this area would become extinct. In the past, if one place got too hot, reptiles could simply find a cooler area to lay their eggs. Now, space is more limited. When it comes to finding a home in the modern world, it's a case of location, location, location. Some reptiles' homes are vanishing from right under their feet. In South Africa, dwarf chameleons are perfectly formed to move around their native vegetation, using specialist gripping feet and a prehensile tail. But like many other places, Cape Town is the focus of a huge property boom, and remaining pockets of wild land are being cleared. Drastic change like this would seem to leave reptiles little room for manoeuvre. But these chameleons have spotted a gap in the market. As the builders move in, immaculate suburban gardens offer them a brand new home. And as these residents are famous for their disappearing act, they often go unnoticed by their new neighbors. Best of all, the chameleon's new residence comes with a restaurant attached. A compost heap loaded with rotting fruit and vegetables draws swarms of flies. It's all fast food for the chameleons with their flypaper tongue. This all-you-can-eat buffet is an improvement on their previous home. The chameleons carve up their desres into individual territories and don't appreciate the neighbors dropping by. They usually show their displeasure through a ritualized display, bobbing their heads, striking a suitably intimidating posture, even changing color to signal their angry mood. But sometimes this mimed combat escalates into a claws-on fight. This chameleon knows this is a place worth fighting for.
We may have pushed them out of their natural habitat, but they're now doing very well in ours. Finding a space in the expanding human world is probably the best way reptiles can improve their prospects for the future. Another lizard has managed to infiltrate the very heart of city life. Geckos view our world from a unique perspective. And in Bangkok, they explore the streets. It seems a million miles away from living in the trees. But these Tokay geckos have transferred their climbing skills to man-made structures. They can do this thanks to minute forces of attraction. Tiny hairs on their feet clamp them to the surface they're walking on. These superhero skills make them expert at breaking and entering. While they can't exactly leap tall buildings in a single bound, they can support their entire weight on just one toe when landing. The human world provides a dazzling new arena for the geckos to explore, and they've quickly learned to make the most of it. Places full of food and people also draw crowds of tasty insects. Our invention of the light bulb has dramatically increased the gecko's odds of capturing a meal. All they have to do is loiter around the lights, waiting for one to be lured in. Not only do they have a superhero's grip, their strike speed would put many to shame. Since geckos prey on insects, we don't mind them sharing our space. So geckos have got what it takes to thrive in the urban jungle. In fact, in most tropical cities, they outnumber us. Neon streets have opened up a whole new gecko world. As cities grow, this reptile's future is looking bright. Many reptiles are rising to the challenges of modern life. Some have hit the jackpot by adjusting fast. Others have managed to carve out a place in the new urban world. But although city living has its benefits, not all reptiles make such good neighbors as geckos. Some are coming head to head with humans. In South Africa, another reptile population is doing well in town. But they're regarded as neighbors from hell. Cities are spreading into areas long ruled by dangerous snakes. These predators do their best to adapt and explore this new urban world. But not everyone appreciates their skills. This is a Cape Cobra, the deadliest snake in Southern Africa. Its venom is neurotoxic, which means it affects your nerve cells and can stop you breathing in less than half an hour. Yet this snake is the one you're most likely to find in a house. Unlike most snakes, cobras don't seem bothered by the strange objects and scents that fill the human world. They make themselves at home. It's thought some even come indoors as a refuge from the midday heat. Snakes have the ideal body shape to sneak around the underworld of our homes. Cobras actively hunt out their prey, so investigating their surroundings is their natural way to locate food. Rodents are a magnet for them. The mice are here to raid the kitchen cupboards. 
So far they've gone unnoticed by the people who live here. But a snake doesn't have to see them. It can pick up their scent from outside. Cold-blooded cobras have been hunting warm-blooded mice for thousands of years. The human world simply provides a different backdrop. The problem is, most people aren't keen on having a cobra as a house guest. It's lack of space that creates a conflict between people and reptiles. And this looks set to get worse in the future. In Cape Town, snakes are turning up in houses on a daily basis. It's such a problem that professionals are called in to remove them. If you want to catch a cobra quick, you'll need a secret weapon. Meerkats are naturally curious. In a new area, they'll inspect everything. And their sensitive nose can soon sniff out the distinctive scent of a snake. And snakes have turned up in some very surprising places. Under cushions and kitchen units, inside washing machines, and even video recorders. Without the meerkat's help, this job could take far longer. And it's not as risky for the meerkat as you'd think. They actively harass snakes in the wild. They can afford to do this because they seem to have a natural resistance to snake venom. Once the meerkat finds the snake, he broadcasts its location with a loud alarm call. And then withdraws. He's bold, but he's not stupid. Now, the snake catcher can do his job and take the snake to safety outside the city limits. It seems that people aren't prepared to share space with snakes. So what happens when they mount an out-and-out -out invasion? The Pacific island of Guam is thousands of miles from the nearest landmass and its unique wildlife has evolved in isolation. But in the 1950s, something strange began to happen to the island's forests. Most birds mysteriously disappeared, leaving insects and spiders to run wild. It became a sinister world, teeming with creepy crawlies. Even stranger, snakes began to appear. But Guam has no native snakes, so how did they get here? Guam is an American island and was an important military base in the Second World War. The increased traffic opened the door for those hitching a ride. And nothing is better designed as a stowaway than a snake. Just one pregnant brown tree snake en route from Australasia would have been enough to launch the invasion. On Guam, the snakes struck very lucky. The island's unique birds had never even seen a snake, let alone one that climbed trees and hunted at night. Roosting birds were sitting ducks. Although they're only mildly venomous, their killing spree has wiped out nearly all Guam's birds. There are now more than 12,000 snakes per square mile. 